Do you like food? Me? Uh, yeah. Why other me? Just wondering. Let me ask a better question. What would you do for one million dollars? Uh... Probably suck dick. Would you have your mouth wired shut forcing you to be on a liquid diet for an entire month in order to achieve enough money to buy you like 900 overly priced smartphones? Hmm. Any long-term side effects? I don't know. Uh, trauma? Uh, maybe some more like flashbacks or something? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because you're doing all that. Except you're not doing it for a million dollars. What? You're doing it because your jaw sucks, you're in pain all the time, and you have trouble chewing without lock jawing. <laughs> Do I at least get like a phone or something? No. Oh, also you're doing it for two months. I had my mouth wired shut for two months, and as one may tend to think when hearing about another individual getting their mouth wired shut, it, uh... It sucked. <laughs> For context, I was born with what people in the medical industry like to call a piece of crap. <laughs> My jaw was a bit crooked, and using it in any sort of way would cause me some sort of mild discomfort or pain. Even in the most mundane ways. For example, doing simple tasks like eating, talking, yawning, blowing bubbles, you know, the everyday things. Definitely didn't help in the old self-confidence department either, because, uh, well, having a crooked jaw and... Also a body that needs to... That, that needs to grow. I grew up with my jaw slowly developing outward. Nothing too crazy, but enough to make me, uh... Not smile in any pictures for most of my life. Aww. No, no! No! Shut up! Shut up! None of that! No! Shut the fuck! <laughs> not this time, mother but yeah, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. I was able to hide it relatively well, and for the most part, people either didn't notice or just didn't care. It really didn't start to affect me both mentally and physically up until three years ago, when I guess I had my last growth spurt or whatever. Things just got weird. Basically, my jaw would lock up, the muscles around it would be in pain all the time, and I wouldn't be able to say certain words without slurring, lisping, or pausing to let the gears turn in my head for that next word I wouldn't stumble on. Aww. What did I just say? So I got surgery, everything's fine, and I want to talk about that. <laughs> All right! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> We've been taking food for granted our entire freaking lives! Okay, I know there's some of you peeps out there thinking, Uh, Adam, I love food. I would never disrespect a thing that brings me eternal joy every couple hours. But hear me out. You know that one saying, you never know what you had until it was stripped away from you for two months? That's not how they're saying, goss. Well, it's true. You see, after jaw surgery, you have to have your jaw wired shut for two months or so. They do this by using your braces, a rubber splint, some rubber bands, and then just like tie everything together and junk. <laughs> You also have to be put on a liquid diet for four to six months because bones are stupid and just be like that. Now one of these alone would suck major poo, but put them together and what do you got? Bippity poppity. Oh God, please have mercy. I yield, I yield. The first two weeks weren't that bad. I mean, things did suck cause I was super swollen, literally couldn't speak or breathe and was in a bit of pain, but it'd all be worth it in the end. Real nice call back me. Things like communicating what I wanted, like chocolate milk, was the worst, because I physically couldn't speak. I literally couldn't make noise to ask for even the simplest of things because of how tightly wired my jaw was. So, I had to use a pen and paper to write down my thoughts and needs, like chocolate milk, to make sure things were properly communicated. Good thing, too, was that I was in a hospital recovering for most of that time, and was being taken care of by really competent and polite nurses who apparently couldn't read and never brought me my goddamn chocolate milk, but... I, I was fine. It wasn't until week three when I began to panic. The day I was finally able to leave the hospital. For the entirety of those days, I had nothing to quote unquote eat except for these things called boosted drinks. And I thought because I was leaving, it meant no more wires and no more freaking drinks. Found out I was hecka wrong when my doctor came in to let me know right before I was about to go that, oh yeah, by the way, you might need to have your jaw like this for another six weeks. Broke. Doc, you broke me. I went home that day in the biggest funk I have ever been in in my life. Take away Adam's food and I, I don't even know who I am anymore. Uh. After a couple days of sulking and regretting, things got uh, a bit weird. <laughs> Well, one day I was laying in bed just contemplating my very existence when my brother hit me up to let me know he was coming over to bring me more food. A couple minutes passed by and my brother finally shows up at my door with a big crate of those boosted drinks. So, I invite him into the house and we both begin walking towards my kitchen. As we were walking towards my kitchen, I noticed that he has another bag with him. I didn't think much of it for a slight second until, uh... <laughs> Well, I did. <laughs> My mind immediately started racing and got curious as fuck. 
What's in the bag like that? It could literally be anything. Anything my heart soul desires. Video games, chalky milk, toothpaste that I needed because I ran out, another bag? What the frick was in that goddamn piece of earth destroying plastic? I had to know. It was driving me mad all within the two seconds of seeing it. So, with the power of detectivism, I developed a question designed specifically to keep the question e in a mindset that would lead me directly to the answer I was looking for. <clears throat> hey, what's that? Oh, yeah. Mom told me to bring you some soup. It's tomato. I look down in pure awe. A spotlight flashes onto the plastic tin full of tomato soup, and a halo-like theme song begins to play in the background. The camera pans back onto my face with a single tear on my eye, looking up, saying, Thank you. Finally, something different! Let me just give you a little perspective on how desperate I was to have something different. I was advised by my doctor to stray away from any foods that might be a little too hot to eat, temperature-wise, because it can mess with the healing process. Meaning, this tomato soup was cold. I also should probably mention that I, Adam, aka something else, hate tomato soup. Tomato soup? is gross. And even with these major deterrents, I didn't care. I was ready to strip down butt ass naked and just go ham on that tub of ice cold tomato soup. In a blink of an eye, I snatched the tub out of my brother's hand, threw it in front of me, and opened it right up. At this point, my mouth is sopping wet, drooling from the mere sight of food that wasn't just one of those stupid drinks I was stuck with. I grab my spoon, dig in, and I swear to God. I have never had something so goddamn good in my entire life. It was literally just tomato soup from a box, cold as hell, but it tasted as if Gordon Ramsay himself served it up with a bedtime story and a loving kiss. I was in heaven, but things quickly turned south when my brother decided that he was gonna have a little taste. You know how if a tiger gets food, it gets all stupid protective and ready to eat anyone who dares to try to snatch it from it? Well, <laughs> He grabbed his spoon, went in for a dip, and as soon as his spoon touched the red goopy gelatinous mess that we call tomato, I grabbed his hand, stared at him intensely, and said with a muffled voice, I WILL FUCKING EAT YOU! <laughs> I was gonna eat him. <laughs> I was gonna eat my brother, with no regrets. <laughs> he was testing me. I mean, of course I didn't. Cause my mouth was wired shut. <laughs> I was, uh, I was in a different headspace, okay? <laughs> I think it was at that moment that <laughs> I realized I might have a problem. So to prevent these types of situations like potentially devouring another human being over cold tomato soup, I decided it was best to figure out ways to potentially cope. Interestingly enough, I found that the best way that I coped with this situation was by heading on to good old YouTube and, uh, <laughs> watching other people eat cold tomato soup. <laughs> What? You know the term living vicariously? I get it. I get it now. I never understood what that truly meant, but I get it. You see, after not eating solid food for about a month and a half now, I found myself just binging YouTube videos of people going to places, buying food, and eating it. Why? Hell, why the frick not? <laughs> I mean, some could say I was performing some form of torture upon myself, but I will argue to my grave that it honestly made me feel so much better throughout the rest of the way. I don't know why. There's probably some psychology to it, and I'm no expert, but when I would watch these food eating channels, I would feel so at ease. The planets would align, the cosmos would shine fluorescently, glimmering with its glory, and I would be at the center just drinking boosted drinks. Happy and watching these people eat food. <laughs> doesn't that, uh, doesn't that genre have, like, a silly name to it? Uh, mukbang or whatever? <laughs> Is that all their audiences are? <laughs> Starving people? Oh, God. <laughs> What lazy content. Anyways, I don't really know how to end this video. It was honestly just a lot of complaining, but I think that's kind of funny. Although I went through a bit of hell after getting my jaw surgery done, I want to reassure people who are going through the same thing as me that it's 100% worth it in the end run. Two for two. Nice one, me. I've never been more happy being able to smile and not be in pain all the time. I ended up getting the wires finally taken off, and, and now I'm on, I think at the time of writing this, month five? Question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> and I slowly over time upgraded from liquids to mashed potatoes to pasta and now solid food so here's a video of me eating my favorite thing in the world for the first time in months <laughs> enjoy white rice black bean steak pico de gallo hot sauce lettuce tomato cheese and guacamole 
all wrapped into a overly sized tortilla that should be called from this day on. That's got some. I, uh, I don't think I can handle this right now. Nay, handle this right now, but uh, I love it. And uh, I'm gonna eat the sh out of this. <laughs> okay, here it goes. I don't know what you, what you guys want from me, to be honest. It's not really a, gonna be like an overly dramatic reaction. There are two dogs killing themselves. Stop it! This is mukbang. I'm mukbang. I'm like really excited right now. Ah! I wanted to tell this story in the video. Basically, after jaw surgery, I had to take this stuff called, uh, it was like, um, it was like Tylenol with codeine or something like that. After I took the codeine, I promised myself that I wouldn't tweet out anything because I didn't want to tweet out anything stupid and uh, look like a fool. Before I was on the codeine um, and before I promised myself not to tweet out anything stupid, I had tweeted out already that I had gotten jaw surgery. And around the same time, there was this meme going around where um, a grape had gotten surgery. So everybody was connecting the two saying that I was the grape and saying that, oh, Adam, look it, you're the grape, you had jaw, you had surgery. And it was a pretty, it was pretty funny. In my coding state mind, I was just looking at these tweets, <laughs> getting pissed off because I was like, what the I'm not a freaking grape. Who the frick are these people calling me a grape? I took my, I took my phone and I was like, these mother, mother freakers are gonna get it now. And I ended up tweeting, where's, oh, you have my phone. But I tweeted out something along the lines of like, I promised myself that I wouldn't tweet while on medication, medication being spelt horribly wrong. <laughs> but I have to say this, I am not a grape. And it, <laughs> it's just, uh, there were a couple of misspellings, I think, in an apostrophe somewhere that shouldn't have been. It was like clear that I was, I was out of it. And uh, I don't know, I just thought that was funny. <laughs> I got pissed off because people were calling me a great and uh, clearly I am a human boy. I'm uh, I'm going to VidCon. Gross. Ah, uh, feature creator. It's whatever. Come say hi. I'm more than welcome. Or more than wanna. I want. Anyways, don't forget to like that smash button and. Uh, <clears throat> Stay hydrated. I just spent nine minutes of my life recording you eating a burrito. <laughs>